Within the print settings tab, we have a number of main configurable items on the left hand side with their corresponding settings on the right hand side. Uh, by default, after completing the configuration wizard, you'll have uh, this preset called My Settings. This My Settings comes with um, what we see in front of us here. Uh, I've created my own preset settings called Working. Um, which is just a snapshot of all these configuration items that I've changed for um, the use with my printer. So rather than bore you with the uh, my settings defaults, I'll just jump straight to my working uh, template and we'll go over them. Uh, by default, I pretty much print everything at 0.2 millimeters. I find the quality to be um, quite, quite good with 0.2. I don't bother with uh, uh, a different first layer height. I don't have um, issues with adhesion anymore since uh, switching over to blue painters tape. PLA and ABS seems to adhere quite well to it. I keep the default perimeters to three and same with the solid top and bottom layers will have at least uh, three layers of each of those. I uncheck extra perimeters if needed and I've, uh, I've changed the seam position from the default align to nearest I found there's a bit of a bug with uh, this stable release of 1.1.7 where um, upon either the start or the end of each layer, I forget which, um, the print head decides to dart back and forth across the print for some unknown reason. Changing the seam position to nearest seems to get rid of or at least hide that bug. Uh, next up we have infill. So this is um, the infill of the part after the bottom three solid layers have been completed. Um, because I'm printing uh, a quadcopter arm, I'll actually increase the infill from the default 30% to 50%. The fill pattern I've changed from the default honeycomb to line, and I've done that because uh, the honeycomb pattern <laughs> seems quite tough on the printer. It um, seems to vibrate quite a lot, and um, I'm just not... Uh, I'm just not confident that all the components of the printer are going to uh, last for years and years if I uh, if I kept the honeycomb infill uh, line seems to seems to be quite strong. I haven't had any issues with parts not being as strong, so that's just my personal preference. Uh, I've also changed the solid infill threshold area from the default 70 down to zero, and I've done that because, um, for example, for this uh, quadcopter arm I'm printing. The area, the area of the arm where the motor attaches to, there are a number of holes there. And this particular feature here, when it was set to 70 millimeters squared, it saw that as being under this threshold and decided to print that entire height of the arm as a solid piece rather than um, adhere to this 50% infill density. So I didn't want that half of the arm to be solid. I'd still like it to be 50% infill, so by setting this down to zero, we'll um, make sure that this 50% infill is adhered to throughout the entire uh, area of the object. Uh, next up we have speed. So I, I generally print um, at 40 uh, millimeters a second for the perimeters. For any small perimeters, I print at 75% of 40, so uh, at 30 millimeters a second. Same with external perimeters. I slow down a bit just to try to get as much detail on the perimeters as I can. With the infill though, I mean you don't see the infill, it's hidden inside the object so I crank that up. I'm printing at 60 millimeters a second. Same with uh, solid infills, top solid infills, support materials, um, bridges, uh, gap infills, back down to 40, same as the perimeters. Uh, travel speed, so this is uh, non-print moves, um, 100 seems very reliable for uh, my printer and I've slowed the first layer speed down to 30 millimeters, 30 millimeters a second. Um, you want to make sure obviously your first layer sticks to the print surface because if that doesn't happen you might as well stop and start again. Uh, and finally acceleration control, so this is one that, um, that I swear by and a couple of them that I've changed are these two here. So we have infill acceleration and bridge acceleration. I've changed infill acceleration down from the default 2000 millimeters a second, which is programmed within the Marlin um, Arduino code. 
I'm setting it in G code to 750 millimeters a second because I found if it's infilling between two narrow perimeters, so the print head is darting back and forth uh, very quickly, the machine will vibrate itself loose to the point where the X and Y um, positions could potentially skip and you'll get layer misalignments. So to reduce the number of layer misalignments or at least to re remove that problem totally, I've reduced the acceleration down to 750 millimeters a second. This allows me to still maintain at least 40 millimeters a second while printing and slowing right down during the infill. Um, oh sorry, 60 millimeters a second infill and slowing down while accelerating up and down from the perimeters. Same with the bridge, I've found uh, after the infill has finished and we're now printing the top layers, the very first top layer that it prints, believe it or not, is classified as a bridge. So I've had to um, reduce that down to 750 as well, um, because once again, if I'm printing between too close perimeters, it'll rattle itself loose, potentially lose alignment on the X or Y axis and that will ruin your print. Uh, and the default, of change the default from zero to 2000, uh, as that is the default acceleration that exists in the Marlin software. Skirt and brim. Um, I use the skirt because as, as you probably know, when your printer is heating up, when your hot end is heating up, plastic starts to ooze out of your hot end. So you at least want to extrude some plastic before the actual part begins. So by default, the minimum extrusion length I set to 10. Um, the, uh, and what that does is that'll just print like an outline of your part, five millimeters from the object throughout the perimeter. And it'll at least do one loop. So I mandate a minimum of 10 millimeters. So if it's a very tiny part that I'm printing, it'll probably do three loops around the part. If it's a very large part that I'm printing, it'll just stick with a one, one loop because it's extruded 10. Uh, I rarely use brim these days. Um, if I have a, a stubborn ABS part that just refuses to stay flat throughout the entire print, I'll definitely put um, like a brim width of five millimeters in there. But uh, once again, since I've switched over to the blue painter's tape, I don't, uh, I don't seem to need uh, the brim anymore with ABS. Uh, PLA obviously um, doesn't bow uh, pretty much any, anywhere as bad as ABS, so that will never require it. Support material, I, I've never used this option, um, so I, I can't give any uh, advice um, with this area. Notes, I don't use notes. Output, output options, I haven't changed anything here at all. Uh, multiple extruders will only have one, so I haven't changed anything here. Uh, and finally, advanced. Yes, okay, so first layer. So even though, I'll go back to layers and perimeters, even though I've set my first layer height to, to match the layer height, in advanced, I have set the first layer to 130% and also the top solid infill to 130%. And the reason why I've done that is because the E3D hot end um, produces such fine prints uh, and even though I've set the nozzle to 0.4 millimeters as part of the configuration wizard, I still see gaps between uh, the lines when it's printing the very top layer. Uh, and the same with the very bottom layer, there are gaps between each of the lines as it prints. So I'm increasing the amount of plastic that is extruded for the first layer, which is the, the bottom layer, and the very top layer. And I've found 130% to be uh, good for me, where each of the lines that are layered down next to each other are of sufficient width that they touch and they perform and they produce a, you know, a nice uh, solid finish on the bottom and on the top as they're the ones that are visible. Uh, and the last thing I've changed here are the number of threads um, from the default to, to eight. I'm not actually sure if that speeds up um, the actual um, G-code creation, but I've changed it to eight regardless. Okay, next up, filament settings.